Well, we've got a lot to cover, guys. We've got a lot to do. It is, obviously, tomorrow we go head-to-head -head with Celtic. Tomorrow, the old firm is on. Tomorrow, the clash of two rivals that genuinely, genuinely hate each other. Well, we're going to talk a little bit about what Big Phil has been saying about big changes that he wants to see for next season. Uh, we're also going to talk a little bit about what Derek Ferguson has been saying about Serial Dessers. And we'll also have a little look as well in a bit more depth at recent games of Ibrox, focusing solely on the old firm Ibrox games rather than the old firm in general. And see how it's gone for Rangers over the last sort of, since 2016, 2017, when we came back in to the Premier League. So it's we'll look at it, you know, in terms of that. So let's obviously start off with the big news, which is the news about Philippe Clement. Philippe Clement, who, you know, has done absolute wonders since he took the job at Rangers. He has been absolutely phenomenal. Now, he was asked about the injuries and the injury situation. And he was asked, you know, you know, these injuries, are they down to bad luck? Um, and Philippe Clement, I think, was very, you know, clear in his response to this. And I think absolutely accurate in his response to this as well, when he said that, it, no, it's not down to bad luck. You know, luck has nothing to do with it. Um, and he says, he says, you know, it's not simply down to bad luck. There are lots of factors that are you know, contributing to injuries at Rangers. And he wants to see huge changes in terms of player fitness, player availability for next season. And some of this obviously will be around moving player put players on. Some of this will be around player, player uh, conditioning, individual training plans, individual conditioning plans to get these players back and ready to go next season. And it seems weird to be talking about next season when this season is not even over yet. But it shows that the, the Belgian has a long term vision for the future of this club. He has a he has a real goal. He has a real, you know, uh, love of Rangers. And, and it's clear that, you know, he wants to be here for the long haul, that he wants to put things in place and get to get Rangers back to where we belong as one of the top teams in Europe, which we are. You know, and I think people will laugh at that. And of course they will. You know, we come from come from the Scottish League, so. And, you know, Europe, we made the Europa League final. But a couple of years ago, you know, we've uh, given some of the biggest teams around Europe tough games. Uh, you know, we smashed Borussia Dortmund in that run to Seville. So, you know, it is not a case of, you know, I think that Rangers are a club that, you know, have to kind of be happy with their lot as, a, as an also ran. You know, they are a club under Big Phil that are moving in the right direction. Now, this season, you know, Philly Clermont has had some awful, awful, uh, had an awful situation with injuries. You know, Tom Lawrence, Abdallah Sima, Ryan Jack, Oscar Cortez, Danilo, Kieran Dowell, uh, Borna Barisic, Yudvid Van Yilmaz, Ross McCausen, Todd Cantwell, have all had spells on the treatment table, and some of them longer than others. Um, and obviously, you know, Rid Van Yilmaz is a doubt for the old firm game tomorrow. We can all just keep our fingers crossed and obviously pray that he will be fit because Borna gives me the fear against Celtic. He really does. You know, but, and, and I think with if you look at Big Phil in, in his response when he talks about injured players, you can see a frustration there, a real kind of, you know, I don't know inner sense of, real frustration that he hasn't got his players at training, that he hasn't got his players available for these games. Now, Big Phil talked about the fact that, you know, he really does need to reduce the number of players who are on the treatment table next season. Now, obviously, some of this will involve players moving on. Obviously, Ryan Jack is out of contract. Kimar Roof is out of contract, uh, for example, two players who do seem to preoccupy the physio's time. So I think, there's a, you know, given the message that he's clearly delivering here about player fitness, player availability. I think they are two players that, you know, and as much as I love Ryan Jack, and I do love Ryan Jack, um, will be moved on at the end of this season. You know, he has vowed that he will significantly reduce the number of players who are in the treatment room next season. Um, and he says that moves are already underway to try and ensure this, uh, to try and ensure his squad has a much cleaner bill of health going through next season. Um and Clement has said that they that he will that you will see a huge improvement in availability and fitness of this Rangers squad. He told Chris Boyd when he was asked about, you know, is it all down to luck? He said that would be too easy. You can have that maybe one or two or three times a season, but not with the consistency that's been here. So we're working really hard now to change that. I'm very much convinced that next season it will be totally different. And I think, you know, with the fact that he clearly has 
a vision in place, not only for player fitness, but in terms of player development, in terms of moving on players that he doesn't want to see at the club anymore, players who are persistently in the stands, players who are persistently you know, out injured, like Jack, like Roof, for example, you know, will be moved on this summer. And if you look at the route that he's kind of going down now, I think the Cortez situation is very much down to sort of an impact injury, which you know is unlegislatable against, you know, you can do all the strength conditioning work in the world, but, you know, you can't legislate for the fact if someone goes through the back of you or someone hurts you with a bad challenge, you know, as Campbell suffered against St. Johnston. But if you look at the route he's going in terms of players, he's looking at, and Niels Coppen is looking at players with good injury histories, players who are young, players of fit, players who are healthy, players who are up and coming. And that's how we seem to be going with the club. And I think that no longer will we be going down the, the route of, well, we're going to sign this player who, you know, he was, he's been injured for a period of time. And if we can get him fit again, he's going to be great. Kimar Roof, for example. You know, that is not a direction that you can see Philippe Clermont taking this team. And it's clear from this interview that he gave to Chris Boyd that there is a clear vision there that he wants this team fitter, healthier and ready to go for next season and it's a big part of what he what he needs and I think you know at the end of the day when you look at it in terms of competing on all domestic fronts next season again the league cup the Scottish cup the, the league going into Europe hopefully in the Champions League and competing I think you know I know Rangers fans have the fear about the Champions League after that disastrous last Champions League campaign but I don't think that happens under Big Phil the guy is tactically astute the guy he is uh, you know he is he is just different class. You know, he is he is someone who is very tactically aware, tactically astute. He is someone who will, you know, I think have his teams ready to play in Europe and be ready to go in Europe. And we've seen that this season against some of those better teams we've played. And also the fact that, you know, if you think back to when he was in charge, I think it was of Genk or maybe Bruges, I can't remember which team it was. He took them to the Santiago Bernabeu against Real Madrid and got a draw in that game. He beat AC Milan with uh, Genk or Bruges. You know, he, this is a guy who knows how to beat these top European teams. And this is something, you know, if he has the squad availability, if he has that bulk of squad available where he can rotate as he wishes to do and keep his players fit, then we are going to be in a great position next season. And I think these changes that he's promising in terms of individual training plans, better fitness plans, pre-season programmes, et cetera, et cetera, to get the players into a position where finally we'll have a fully fit squad is something to be welcomed. And I said, and I said, as I said in the earlier in the video, the other thing we welcome, of course, is the fact that he clearly has a long-term vision and is wanting to stay here for the long term. OK, let's move it along a little bit and talk about what former Rangers player Derek Ferguson has said about Serial Dessers. Now, Dessers is someone who divides the fan base, someone who, you know, who he scores goals, but he misses a lot of chances. You know, he's someone who fans, some fans think he's great, some fans think he's OK, some fans think he's absolutely dreadful. You know, and everyone is entitled to their own opinion, despite the fact that some people out there don't think that certain people are entitled to other opinions, you know, uh, and will, you know, relentlessly hound them and, and troll them if, if they do have that opinion. Now, since Dessas came for 4.5 million, you know, 4.5 million is not a lot of money for a striker in, in this modern day and age. For Rangers, it is a lot of money. Four and a half million for a club like ours at this moment in time in the financial situation we are in without the spending power that, that, that you know, the team south of the border have. Four and a half million is a lot of cash. So, you know... Across all competitions, he's racked up 17 goals. However, still, you know, obviously gets a lot of criticism for his misses and obviously his misses in high pressure games. You know, for example, the last game against Celtic, where when he was clean through on goal, he then what, takes far too many touches, the, lets the defender get back, completely balls is up the chance, and we end up obviously going on to lose that game. He scores that early goal. You know, who knows how that game finally uh, turns out. But then again, hindsight is a wonderful thing, isn't it? Um, now, Derek Ferguson has been talking about serial debtors and kind of is very confused about what debtors is. And I don't mean in terms of, you know, is he a footballer or not? I mean, in terms of what sort of centre forward is he is. Now, you, you look at centre forwards around the world and you look at, you know, players and you say that they're goal poachers, they're finishers, they're pure, simple, uh, you know, goal poachers, goal clinical, goal finishers. Some of them are more forwards who will, you know, run in behind. Some are forwards who will link with the midfield. Some are forwards who are target men. So, you know, they have a clearly defined role. And it doesn't seem to be that, that 
Dessas has a clearly defined role or has a clearly defined style. And I think that's quite right. He, you know, you, you can't say he's a target man because he isn't. You know, he's not a player who's going to win a lot of headers because he doesn't. You know, he does get out muscled a lot of times. So he's not that. He's not quick enough to run in behind people. So realistically, you know, what is he in terms of a forward? You know, he is a, quite a confusing confusing player. He really is. And, you know, he scores some amazing goals and, score, and then will, will, you know, absolutely balls it up. So what has Derek Ferguson been saying about Serial Dessas? Well, he said that when you've played with some quality strikers, you know, if you get into space in the box, it's about one and two touch finishes. Now, obviously, Ferguson has in his time with Rangers played with some top quality Rangers strikers. And he's right in what he says. You know, when you are a top quality striker, a, a clinical finisher like a Michael Moles, like a Marco Negri, like an Ali McCoist, you know, like a Mark Haitley, Robert Fleck, um, you know, the list is endless. The list is endless, guys. And I, and I know I've missed people out and you're going to go have a go and whatever, fine. But look, if I sat and listed every range, top Ranger striker, I'd be here all day. Um, but it is right. You know, they are strikers who the ball falls to them and bang it in the back of the net. Ball falls them, bang in the back of the net. Or ball falls them, uh, control, bang, control, bang. You have... As a forward, you have such a limited window to actually score goals. You cannot afford to control, set, shoot. You haven't got time to take those touches. Someone is on you quicker than keeper, the defender, whoever. You've got to hit it first time or you've got to set yourself and then shoot. Two touches maximum. Um, he, he goes on to say, Dessas always wants to take that third and fourth touch. And that's the frustration with him. And I think that's what we've all kind of seen. And that's why there has been a frustration with Cyril Dessas that he, he wants to take far too many touches, as he did, um, obviously, against um, Celtic at Parkhead, because that's how he gets shut down. Ferguson went on to say he blows hot and cold, but he's still got 13 goals in the league. I mean, decent return, decent return. Uh, Clemon has got in his head and he's been feeling the pressure. He's not shown it too much. I'm not sure exactly what Dessas is. Is he a target man? Does he run the channels? He certainly is not an out and out finisher. Sometimes he makes runs and you wonder where he's going. Uh, so he's a bit mixed up. He looks like someone who needs to be coached when it should be natural in, he should be a natural in this game. And I think the, the thing, the point here is quite right in what Ferguson says is that at the age of 28, 29, you are not really coachable to improve. You know, that that is not what is going to happen. You are not going to just suddenly become a better player. You are not suddenly going to become, uh, you know, coached to become a, a finer option, you know, up front. You're not going to be, you know, that is, you've reached your peak. You kind of have to maintain what you've got. And then after you reach the age of 30, it is a little bit downhill after that. So, Look, at the end of the day, Dessas is what Dessas is, and he is an enigma, an absolute enigma. And I think Ferguson's right in terms of what he has to say, in terms of this, in terms of this, trying to find out what he is. Is he the long-term solution? I really don't think he is the long-term solution. I think there are better options out there for us next season, and we'll obviously look into that as, as we progress. Well, let's turn our minds a little bit now towards next season. No, it's not, it's not, it's not. Let's turn our minds towards tomorrow, even. So we're going to look a little bit at the last few games in the old firm and, you know, how things have turned out between Rangers and Celtic at Ibrox. And I want to sort of break it down to just really look at the, the games at Ibrox with tomorrow's old firm game, been at Ibrox, because, look, it's no point looking at Parkhead because it's a different experience now. You know, we're playing at Ibrox with all Rangers fans in the stadium. It is going to be a very different experience to going to Parkhead. So, you know, we look at the results in recent times over a period of time at Ibrox. And over recent times, the picture is not one that is very, very pretty. I mean, before we get into the results, this is the breakdown of the 19 games. Now, I went back in my research as far as the 2016-2017 season and the Betfred Cup semi-final. OK, that's as far back as I went. I wanted to just sort of limit it, limit it to that short period of time and have a look at how the games have gone since 2016-2017. So since then, there have been 19 matches between Rangers and Celtic between 20, since 2016-2017. In that period, we have won only seven games. They have won 11 of the games, and there has been one draw. Okay, so overall, they have dominated. And this is at Ibrox. This is not including Parkhead. This is just at Ibrox. So at Ibrox, we have won 
less than half of our games against them since 2016, 2017. You'll see where I'm going. Which, if anybody brands me as negative, I just want to say that I am going somewhere with this. And you just need to sort of follow me through with it. So let, let's go back from, from this season or let's go back to 2016, 2017. So in 20, this season, obviously, we lost 1-0 earlier this season when Michael Beal was in charge. And many people feel that Beal should have gone after that game. And I'm inclined to agree. There was the 3-0 win post-split. Um you know, which, look, at the end of the day, didn't really matter because the league was done and dusted. And I know and I've said in the past, and you, you 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 never have an old firm game with nothing riding on it. I know that. You know, there's always something riding on an old firm game, you know, bragging rights, whatever, whatever. But realistically, in terms of trophies, in terms of league points, there was nothing really riding on it. So you go back to the SFA Cup semi-final, 1-0. Um, and that's Hamden, but it still counts. I don't know why it's in there, actually, to be honest with you. Fireplay Cup final, 2-1. They can be taken out because they're Hamden. Let's go back, though, to the Premiership games. A 2-2 at New Year, a 2-1 defeat under, under Geo. Now, then you go back to 21-22, and you can see Rangers, therefore, at that period, um, you know, luck is turning. A 1-0 win. And then, obviously, during the 55 season, a 4-1 win, um, a 1-0 win there as well. In 1920, in 2019 2020 there's a 1-0 defeat to Celtic, a 2-0 defeat to Celtic at Ibrox. Uh Post that, then there's a 2-0 win for us, a 1-0. But then, obviously, the results in 2016-2017 onwards through to 17-18, 18-19 are not great. 3-2 defeat, 2-0 defeat, 5-1 defeat, 2-1 defeat, 1-0 defeat. So you can say that in recent times, things have turned a little bit better, obviously, since when Stephen Gerrard came to the club. You know, if you take those games there and you've got, what, a sample there, a sample size, not including, yet, yeah, including... Um, Tomorrow's of, I think it's what, nine games. So in the last nine games, in the last nine games, we've won three of them. They've won four of them. Um, is that right? And there's been a draw in there as well. So it's not been great, has it, you know, in recent times against them. Now, the last time it was good against them was when obviously Stephen Gerrard was the manager and Stephen Gerrard had got the team playing as a unit, had a very clear game plan, had a clear way of taking them on and beating them. And, and I honestly feel that we're starting since, you know, if you look at the last game we played against them, I know it was a parkhead, but you look at that game and you look at how we've changed mentality-wise, game-wise, everything, you can see it's starting to change in terms of mentality, organisation, tactics, game plan, etc. Big Fellies is starting to move this so that, you know, they are starting to feel pressure. They are starting to feel uncomfortable. They are starting to feel that Rangers are becoming a real threat again, you know, for the first time since the Steven Gerrard era. And for me, that is that is why we can be more positive about the game tomorrow because of Big Phil and what he's installed. It needs, I mean, you look at those results in 16, 17, and there needs to be a big change in this team, a big change in this club when it comes up against playing against that lot. If you look pre-2012 and you look back over the Ibrox fixtures, they hardly ever came and hardly ever got a result at Ibrox. You know, certainly when I first started supporting Rangers back in 86, 87, when Graham's, you know, went, went, and during the Sooners years, there was no very few games they ever came anywhere, came away from Ibrox with anything. You know, they were smashed. Um, they, were, they were taken on by a, a team that didn't fear them at all. And I think that's one of the things that's kind of happened over recent seasons. There's been a, a fear factor around them. And I think Big Philly is stripping away that fear factor and restoring a confidence to our team. And for me, that is what we need to see from Rangers tomorrow. An up and at them attitude, go at them from minute one until minute 90, and that's it, guys. That is the way it has to go. Well, let me know what you think in the comments of the stories we've covered today in this video. Thank you so much for watching Glasgow Rangers Nation, guys. Busy day for the channel tomorrow. Lots of uh, content coming up. So please come and join us for all the content that is coming up. Thank you for watching. Please smash the sub. Help the channel to keep on growing. On the way out, two favours I always ask. One, smash the like. It helps videos to grow. And number two, remember always, we are the people.